Thank you very much for coming. Uh, before we start the meeting, I'd like to ask Mr. Bolio to open up with the prayer, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Heavenly Father, I pray tonight as we work with the people of the NWT on this very important educational item, I pray that we're able to work together with respect and dignity appropriate of our positions. And no matter what the outcome of this, we recognize that there are two sides to this issue and both sides want the best for the children that, that we're working for. For that, I pray for the guidance tonight as we work through this legislation. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Bowie. <coughs> I'd like to welcome everybody to the Standing Committee on Social Development. Um, does committee agree to adopt the agenda as is presented to us? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Is there any declaration of conflict of interest at this point in time? Okay. At this point in time, I would like to ask uh, our, my colleagues to introduce themselves, uh, starting with Mr. Blake. Good evening. Frederick Blake, MLA for Mackenzie Delta. Welcome. Hello, I'm Tom Bolio, MLA for Tuneda and Willoughby. Karen Tester, member for Cam Lake. Good evening. Danny McNeely, Satu Region. Michael Nadley, MLA for Detroit. Julie Green, MLA for Yellow Lake Centre. Kevin O'Reilly, Frame Lake. Uh, on my left hand side is Glenn Rutten, our law clerk, uh, Megan Walsh, our research, and on my right is Doug Showery, our clerk of our committee. Uh, my name is Shane Thompson. I'm the chairperson of the Social Development Committee and my riding I represent is in the Hende riding. Um, today the Standing Committee on Social Development is holding a public cause by clause review of Bill 16, an act to amend the Education Act. I will now invite the Minister Alfred Moses, the Honourable uh, Minister Alfred Moses, uh, 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 Minister of Education, Culture and Employment to introduce himself and the staff for the record and proceed with any opening comments you may have. Minister Moses. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am pleased to be here today to introduce Bill 16, an act to amend the Education Act. This bill seeks to change the age of entitlement to access kindergarten programs from five years old to four years, as well as reduce the minimum hours of instruction required for grades 1 through 12 to 945 hours. Today, I am joined by Ms. Sylvia Hayner, my Deputy Minister, Ms. Rita Mueller, Assistant Deputy Minister, Education and Culture, Mr. Sam Shannon, Director of Policy, Legislation and Communications, Ms. Julia Mott, Senior Advisor to the Deputy Minister, uh, Mr. Mike Reddy, Director, Legislation Division at the Department of Justice, and Maya Lepage, my Ministerial Special Advisor. Before getting into the content of the bill, I'd like to commend the committee for the work that you have done and traveling to Hay River and Inuvik to hear from residents across the Northwest Territories as well as here in Yellowknife. Mr. Chair, the goal of these two major initiatives, also known as Junior Kindergarten and STIP, is to improve the NWT education system for all learners so that they can meet the challenges of today and into the future and be successful in whatever they choose to do. Junior Kindergarten will provide all NWT families, regardless of their income or geographic location, the option of enrolling their four-year-old children in free, play-based, developmentally appropriate program. As this assembly has recognized, early childhood development is critical to a child's future success, and there is a direct link between the quality of early education and care and positive future outcomes. Mr. Chair, we recognize the need for schools to have the resources necessary to support our students. As committee is aware, all education authorities have begun implementing the newly revised Inclusive Schooling Ministerial Directive, and the department is collecting information on compliance in both the funding application and inclusive school-based practices. Over time, this data will inform us as to whether the current inclusive schooling funding is sufficient. Should the need for increased funding be demonstrated, we will follow the appropriate budgetary processes to seek an increase. 
I have also committed to funding JK at a PTR of at least 12 to 1 for the remainder of the 18th Legislative Assembly. I also want to ensure, <clears throat> I also want to ensure you that ECE and education authorities continue to work together and are on track to have the appropriate supports in place before the start of the upcoming school year for the transportation of JK students. We are working with authorities to ensure that the, where transportation is provided, booster seats and seat belts are utilized, and we have committed to ensuring that the costs associated with these are covered. Mr. Chair, we also recognize that we need to provide teachers with time to plan and develop their own learning. This government knows that in order to improve our students' academic results, we not only need junior kindergarten offered in every community, we also need our teachers to have time during their regular work week and school year to develop their skills and properly plan, implement, and assess their students' learning. In order to improve student outcomes, we must ensure educators have access to the experiences, resources, training and professional development to improve their workload and wellness situations so they can focus on excellence in teaching. This is what the Strengthening Teacher Instructional Practices Initiative is all about. Before the end of the 2016-2017 school year, I will provide committee with a complete monitoring, evaluation and accountability framework for the SNP pilot project where we anticipate seeing improvements in te teacher satisfaction through pre- and post-school year surveys, teacher human resource statistics, such as six days, use of professional development time, student attendance, and student course completions. Significant change will take time, and evaluation will likely evolve as schools try new approaches with their school calendars. As such, the evaluation plan will include a reporting schedule outlining the appropriate measures as the initiative evolves over time. Mr. Chair, I want to re reiterate that I believe the territory-wide implementation of junior kindergarten and the opportunity to build in time during the school year for teachers to complete their professional duties and strengthen the quality of instructional practices will be game changers. I strongly believe that in years to come, we will look back at this moment in time and to these two strategic initiatives and see them as a vital step on the road to success for our young children, our youth, and our territory. As we continue to roll out these initiatives, I am committed to providing regular public updates on the implementation, monitoring, and outcomes of STEP, and will continue to report on EDI results. At this time, I would be pleased to answer any questions that committee members may have. Masi Cho, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Minister. Uh, does committee have any questions or comments they wish to share with Minister Moses and his officials? Ms. Green. I want to ask you about uh, the bullet that's at the top of uh, page three. Today I asked you some questions in the House about the cost of busing using figures that were provided by Yellowknife uh, Catholic Schools and Yellowknife Public School District Number 1. And between the two of them, they're estimating that the cost of busing will be $500,000 for the, the students who've indicated they need busing, which is about 20% of the whole enrollment. Um, this amounts to a pretty large amount of their budget, and there is a school... Uh, busing formula in place, but it's my understanding that the department is not applying that to JK. Am, am I right about that? Thank you, Ms. Green. Minister Moses. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. As I said in, uh, in the House today, the department is committed to uh, uh, funding the, uh, the busing once those numbers are established. Uh, I know that uh, our staff has been working with the education authorities as junior kindergarten has been rolling out, and we want to make sure that uh, as we're, we're moving forward to protect the safety of our children on top of giving them the best uh, uh, education outcomes that their safety is taken into consideration. Uh, maybe I can ask my deputy minister for a little bit more information on how those discussions have been going. 
Thank you, Minister Moses. Ms. Hainer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, our understanding is that um, the education authorities are working to determine exact numbers of, yes. and needs, and until, until we know those, we won't know costs because uh, numbers determine the size of the bus, for example, and, and those types of things. Um, as you can appreciate, um, funding things like um, seat belts and booster seats is not something that is in the current formula. So, um, right, we have to make allowances in terms of, of how we approach covering those costs because of that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Hainer. <clears throat> Ms. Green. Uh, thank, thank you for your answers. Uh, so for greater certainty, uh, you're talking about covering the cost of the, of the transportation itself in addition to seat belts or booster seats or both that might be required on the bus. Is that correct? Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. Ms. Minister Moses. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ms. Chair, and yes, that is correct. Okay. Thank you. I'll go back on the list. Okay. Uh, any other people? Mr. Riley. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, there's been quite a bit of discussion around what this uh, concept of fully funded really means. And uh, I, I note in the correspondence from the, the committee to uh, the minister that uh, the issue of uh, inclusive schooling and uh, Aboriginal program, program funding um, were raised. Uh, and as I understand it, the... Uh, junior kindergarten students are not included in the formula that's used to uh, apportion money to the district education authorities for those those two uh, areas. So can someone just explain how this formula works and can we actually get a copy of the formula? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Minister Moses. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair. I almost called you Mr. Speaker. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thank you for... Uh, and uh, in terms of the inclusive schooling, right now we are funding it uh, above the legislated numbers. As I mentioned, uh, education authorities that are in the first year of uh, putting out the inclusive schooling ministerial directive will be uh, monitoring that. We'll be talking with the uh, education authorities to see if the, that funding is actually addressing the inclusive schooling needs. Uh, even with the uh, junior kindergarten uh, students entering the school system, we will still be, uh, I believe, funding uh, over that, that at that level, um, the thing with when we bring junior kindergarten uh, students, four-year-olds into the education system, uh, they will have more opportunities to uh, our school supports, whether they're uh, the school team supports, principals, uh, other educators, uh, program support teachers. Uh, as for the funding formula, uh, perhaps I can go to. Peter, could you be able to answer? Well, we could just go ahead and provide that to. Uh, to committees so they can see how we uh, adjust the formula funding on that. Thank you, Minister Moses. Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate the response from the, the minister, but that's not what I was asking for. I want somebody to explain how these formulas work and whether indeed junior kindergarten <laughs> students are counted in the formulas for the purposes of providing funding to the schools or the DEAs uh, uh, that's that's all I need to know. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Yeah, I'll go to uh, my deputy minister for that one. Thank you, Minister Moses. Ms. Hainer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, no, those students are not included in the formula for those two items. Thank you, Ms. Hainer. Mr. Tester. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'd like to thank uh, the committee for allowing me to participate in this review. Um, I do have questions for the minister, and they actually dovetail off my um, my colleagues um, around the inclusive uh, education. So, uh, I guess right off the bat, the deputy minister, Ms. Hainer, just said that they're not included. Um, if we're adding junior kindergarten to the act, as we intend to do, uh, it means it's a, a new part of the curriculum. Why aren't we funding every level of the curriculum, every grade in the curriculum? Are there other grades that are not funded? Can we get some clarity on why it's not being included if, if we are amending the act? Okay. Thank Mr. You. Tester, could you clarify which sure. question you okay. want to ask? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Mr. there's Tester. a lot here. So I'll just, I'll just point that. So 
if the intention of this bill is to amend the act to um, add junior kindergarten, to transform junior kindergarten from a program into a full grade of, of school, it seems to me that inclusive education funding should flow across the board. So it should hit every grade, every student who's in, our, in these schools should receive the, the same level of funding. So why are we not funding this one grade that we're adding into the curriculum? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tester. Minister Moses or? Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. As, as I mentioned, as we're moving forward into the implementation for the upcoming uh, academic school year, we're working with district education authorities to see what those funding uh, models are going to be, and we will be coming back, uh, coming back to uh, uh, seek the appropriate funding to have that implementation moving forward. As I mentioned, we are committed to uh, fully funding junior kindergarten in the uh, upcoming 17-18 uh, academic year. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Moses. Mr. Tester. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so just to be clear then, so fully funding in the upcoming academic year, will that include this inclusive education funding? Is that what the Minister is telling me now? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tester. Minister Moses. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and I think that uh, I, I answered that question when uh, Ms. Ms. Green, MLA Green, had answered it. Uh, that we're, with the inclusive schooling uh, dollars that we do give out there um, and the directive that's coming forward, we will be monitoring uh, the inclusive schooling directive and the outcomes and whether or not we would have to go through that uh, supplementary appropriation to seek further funding should the inclusive schooling uh, funding that we currently have right now not uh, meet the needs. And as we uh, committed to, we will be providing that uh, formula of funding. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Moses. Ms. Green. Mr. Uh, thank you. Uh, still on the topic of JK, I'm wondering what progress there has been on uh, renovations to the schools that will be hosting JK for the first time this fall. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. Minister Moses. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, our, our staff has been working with education authorities to identify which schools are going to be needing, uh, whether it's appropriate uh, toilets, sinks, other spaces um, that need renovations. Um, we can provide a list of those schools uh, and which schools are going to be coming up in the, in the fall. Thank you, Minister uh, Moses. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, and it will be done uh, over the summer in preparation for the... Uh, for the 17-18 uh, school year. Thank you, Minister Moses. Ms. Green. Uh, that, that was a question I got at my constituency meeting last night, so I'm happy to hear you have it in hand. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. O'Neill. <coughs> McNeely, sorry. Sorry, Danny. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I welcome committee also, like my colleague here, for allowing me to participate in this, uh, what I think, very important uh, review. Um, in, in hearing your, your presentation, Mr. Minister, uh, my, my question is uh, committing to funding JK prior to the enrollment seems to me kind of like premature. You, do, you don't know how many students we're going to have and what size of a bus to get or how many seat belts. So I just point that out there, but I, I'm thanking you for making that pre-commitment. And um, that leads me to, the, to my question. Uh, question on uh, when was the last time this legislated formula was reviewed or is it an annual thing because we've got children that are coming in of age and going out. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. McNeely. <coughs> Minister Moses. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, I can honestly say I'm not sure when the, uh, the, uh, that funding formula was reviewed. Uh, much like a lot of our other programs that we have within the Department of Education, Culture, and Employment, we try to review them on a yearly basis. Uh, I appreciate the comments from uh, MLA McNeely uh, around the, uh, the funding for junior kindergarten. It was a commitment uh, made by the uh, Minister of Finance, and uh, we reiterated it in the House uh, for this upcoming year. And that's the discussions we're having with education authorities now to see what the enrollments are going to be. Uh, come the fall time and make sure that we have uh, uh, funding, supports, resources in place for all our communities. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Moses. My last. Yep. Mr. McNeil. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Minister, for that response. Um, 
my uh, my last question is uh, if we're gonna do, do do we have to amend the uh, legislative formula to accommodate our proceeding ahead with the implementation of this act should it go ahead thank you mr speaker thank you, mr or, mcneely mr chair, chair. Thank, you. <coughs> thank you mr mcneely minister moses uh, thank you um the funding formula right now is not uh, tied with legislation so uh, that's some, something that uh, we can review is the uh, the funding formula uh, much like i said like a lot of our uh, uh, programs uh, and po other things within our uh, uh, department around funding. Thank you, Minister Moses. Any other questions or comments? Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to follow up on, sorry, the funding issue again. Um, so the, the minister or his staff are prepared to give us the formula for um, how they apportion uh, inclusive schooling funding uh, to the schools and also the Aboriginal programming. Uh, I would I'd like that formula as well. So just to be crystal clear that we're going to get those two formulas uh, very quickly in the next day or two. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Minister Moses. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, yes, that is something that we can provide to committee and we'll try to get it to you as soon as we can. Thank you, Minister Moses. Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, Mr. Chair, and thanks to the Minister for that uh, commitment. Um, I guess uh, uh, my last question on this is, um, it seems to me that the Department then seems to be taking this approach that uh, you're not going to include the junior kindergarten students in those formulas, but you're going to use the, uh, the one to 17 to 1 or whatever. That That's what you're going to use as your ratio to, to monitor inclusive schooling, and if we fall below that or whatever, then there's going to be some additional funding provided. Is that a correct char characterization of how this is going to be dealt with? <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Minister Moses. Thank you. And uh, as I've said uh, in the House and before committee that uh, with JK, we are uh, funding at the 12 to 1 ratio, and uh, that's not, and the, the rest at uh, uh, 16 to 1. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Minister Moses. Ms. Green? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to ask some questions uh, about STIP if people are finished talking about uh, JK. Um, okay. Uh, so um, thank you for acknowledging our travel uh, in April to the different locations. We, uh, we got a, a huge amount of public interest in, in what we were doing. And um, we, we heard from both teachers who were, uh, were very supportive of this initiative. Um, and in a place like Inuvik that has a lot of support plans for students in place, it was easy to see how useful this would be. Um, we also heard from parents who are pretty anxious about the loss of instructional time given poor achievement up to this point on the Alberta achievement tests and, uh, and about low graduation rates. And so um, as I was trying to juggle these two completely different points of view, I wondered if um, setting uh, the hours of instruction to the same level as Alberta currently has would be a reasonable compromise. And so what that would mean is the 945 proposed would be in place for grades 1 to 9, and the senior grades... 10 to 12 would be at 1,000 hours, which is what we have from research as the current level in Alberta. Is that something that you see as, uh, as a possibility? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. <clears throat> Minister Moses. Uh, thank you. Is that, uh, uh, I'd say, new to me in terms of uh, recommendation or anything that might have come from committee? At this point, I just have to take it to, uh, uh, into consideration. Uh, I know we are doing a uh, clause by clause review uh, uh, later on today, and not just something I have to take into consideration and, and wouldn't be able to uh, commit to. Uh, as a clause by clause review, the process is anything that comes forward, I do have to take before cabinet. And uh, same thing with the, the LP, how we vetted it through to get to where it is today. Yeah. Thank you, Minister Moses. Ms. Green. Thank you, Minister. I appreciate yeah. that you're, you're not able to make a commitment right here and now. I more wanted to float it to you as a, an idea so that you could uh, discuss it with Cabinet and see uh, what kind of response there 
is there because we're in this clause by clause review uh, if we do go ahead with any amendments as as you know better than I do um, that they will now happen directly in the Legislative Assembly not in this format here yeah thank you thank you Ms. Green more of a comment unless you wish to yeah. okay Mr. Blake Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a question for the minister. Uh, would the minister be open to an automatic review by a committee of the Legislative Assembly after three years? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Willey. Minister Moses. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. And as I said in my uh, opening comments, we will be uh, providing committee by the end of this uh, school year with a monitoring, evaluation, and accountability framework uh, around this specifically. So we will be looking at it on a yearly basis. Uh, in terms of the legislation, that's something that's not in our uh, review of the clauses at the moment, and, and much like uh, the recommendation considerations, uh, that is something I have to take into consideration as well and, and look into. But uh, we are committed to evaluating the program, monitoring it, and, uh, and uh, coming up with accountability framework on, on step moving forward. Thank you, Minister Moses. Is there any other follow -up? Hello, Mr. Blake. No. Any other questions? Mr. O'Reilly. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I guess I would like to pursue this uh, idea of uh, uh, a mandatory review after three years. Um, as I understand it, the, uh, the MOU uh, with the NWTTA as part of their collective agreement um, characterized this uh, change in instructional hours as a pilot project for three years. So... Um, uh, having a, a review after three years, I guess the, uh, that's going to happen anyway. So um, um, I'm just wondering um, if there's some reluctance on the part of the minister or cabinet, I guess, to, uh, you know, who, who, who would conduct the review and, and what level of involvement regular MLAs and perhaps the public might have in that. Is that what the issue is here, Mr. Chair? I'm just trying to understand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Minister Moses. Yes. First of all, it's uh, <coughs> legislative uh, within the clause. It's not uh, directly linked with the mandatory review that uh, the member's uh, discussing. Um, like any of our uh, education renewal uh, initiatives that we've taken on, a lot of them are three-year pilot programs, and whether we move on from them or not, we're going to continue to, to move, it, move it forward with this uh, in terms of the, the review after three years. Um, in terms of uh, legislative uh, other issues, maybe I can ask um, Mike if there's anything that you can add to, to that. Thank you, Mr. Moses. Mr. Reddy. Mr. Reddy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. No, I don't have anything in particular to add, but uh, certainly uh, if Mr. O'Reilly has any other questions in terms of the technical drafting and, and whether this is possible under the legislation, I'd be happy to, to answer those questions. Thank you, Mr. Reddy. Minister Moses. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, also the review will be, as I mentioned in previous meetings, uh, be undertaken by the joint uh, committee that includes the superintendents, uh, NWT Teachers Association, and uh, uh, personnel from, from, my, from my department at the Department of ec and &E. uh, Maybe a little bit more detail. I will ask uh, uh, my deputy minister to uh, uh, add a little bit more. Thank you, Minister Moses. Ms. Hainer. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in terms of commenting on, on an item that would require an amendment to the bill, I think what the minister was trying to uh, explain is, is without having an actual amendment before us that we can run through our processes, which includes the minister having a discussion with cabinet, he cannot actually advise committee whether or not he could support something of that nature. It's, there's a process issue here. So if, if he had received notice of, of potential amendments or directions that, that committee wished, wished to pursue, such as what you're suggesting in advance and had an opportunity to raise that with Cabinet, we could have come here this evening with uh, more information on those items and be, been prepared to comment more specifically. But as it is now, we can take this this away. What you're what you're suggesting, and and investigate it further, and um, the minister can can raise it with cabinet. But until he's done that, it's hard for us to to provide anything. 
specific. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sainer. I think that explains the process quite well. I thank you very much. And that's, thank you very much for explaining that to Mr. O'Reilly. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate the uh, comments from the minister and, and his staff about needing to run any potential changes through their own process and cabinet review and so on. Uh, but this uh, idea of a uh, uh, mandatory review is uh, something that's been done in other legislation here, the Official Languages Act, as I understand it. So this is not something brand new or uh, unprecedented in any way. So, um, uh, Nathan, I think I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Minister, I take that as a comment. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. McNeely. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. I'm just going to read a um, paragraph from this uh, article that uh, that I downloaded and printed, dated uh, November uh, 2016, on the uh, graduate graduation rates for the NWT. And it says in here, graduation rates are consistently lower in our smaller communities, which dropped by 12% in 2015. And this is a survey for the last 10 years, from 05 to 15. Although we can expect to see considerable variable from year to year due to our small population numbers, these data support the need for initiatives such as education renewal and early childhood development. So when, when I say, when I look at this, and I look at the new initiative that's being discussed. I say, how is the new initiative going to improve our statistics to increase the graduation rates, which is an indicator to the system we're delivering? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McNeely. Minister Moses. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. In, in education renewal, you know, there is a, a strong focus on student outcomes as well as uh, a focus on uh, teacher wellness in the communities that, will bo that have both been identified under education renewal that will help with the, uh, the outcomes. This is one area that we are working and moving forward to, uh, to look at getting better student outcomes and, as I said in my opening statements, allowing teachers that time to, to plan, to assess, uh, to do collaborative work with their uh, colleagues to ensure that uh, quality of education and teaching is improving so that student outcomes are improving and they're engaging the students uh, as well. And um, as, as I mentioned in past, uh, past committee meetings, uh, I do believe we'll be coming before committee next week with, uh, with an update and presentation on uh, our educational renewal initiatives uh, that we have throughout the NWT as well. Thank you, Minister Moses. Mr. McNeil. That, that, that's it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted a response to this stat. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. McNeil. Mr. Tester. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, the last time this uh, I, I particip participated in this committee's uh, work towards STIP, um, the communication around the, the, the STIP objectives was very poor. Um, the minister's opening comments today put it very clearly what this is all about. Um, I don't have a comment, but I uh, sorry a question. But, but my, my comment is that uh, this kind of leadership for for controversial things like like this that that can be seen with some kind with some controversy as we've seen this roll out, they need strong leadership from from the minister and from the department. Um, so standing committees can do can do their work, so that people can clearly understand what's going on. And um, now we're here, but it's been a long process to get here. So in the future, when you're rolling out initiatives or um, evaluating this pilot, communicate it with the same kind of clarity and leadership so people are all on the same page and we understand what we're trying to achieve with this. Otherwise, things can go sideways very quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tester. More of a comment, Minister? Minister, Minister Moses. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And there was a lot of work that was done into this uh, leading up to, to where we are today, both from an old committee when you went out and did your consultations as well as uh, from our staff, as well as the uh, education authorities, played uh, a very significant and important role in getting this information out uh, and, and uh, updating their parents, uh, as well as community members. 
Um, this is something that we have shared and talked with with our Aboriginal governments as well and talking about how we can communicate and work better so that we have better outcomes. And, and when we get to legislative changes and things that are of uh, important nature, that we have the support and we're all on board to, uh, to move this forward and appreciate the, uh, the members' comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moses. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Red. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. I, I just uh, want to understand uh, um, what uh, the minister wants to do with this bill once the committee reports back. Is it the intention of uh, the minister to bring this forward for third and final reading in the, the current session? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Minister Mr. O'Reilly. Minister Moses. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, that's the plan. Okay, thank you. Mr. O'Reilly, good. Okay, is there any other questions for Minister Moses? Okay, seeing none. Uh, does the committee agree to proceed uh, to a clause-by-clause -clause review of Bill 16 and act to amend the Education Act? Agreed. Agreed. Okay, the committee agreed to conduct a clause-by-clause -clause review of Bill 16. Let's turn to page one of the bill. There are five clauses in the bill. Clause number one. Agreed. Clause number two. Clause number three. Clause number four. Clause number five. Does the committee agree that Bill 16, an act to amend the Education Act, is now ready for consideration in the Committee of the Whole? Sorry, Mr. Bolio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move that Bill 16, an act to amend the Education Act, be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration in the Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bill. The motion is in order. The motion is on the floor. To the motion. Question. The question has been called. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion is carried. Bill 16, an act to amend the Education Act, will be reported to the Assembly as ready for consideration in the Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Min Mr. Minister. Thank you for your officials. And thank you, everybody, for coming out this evening. Minister Moses, do you have any closing comments do you wish before we adjourn? No, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And it, it has been a, a long uh, road to get where we are today. There's been uh, a lot of improvements and a lot of uh, engagement with our stakeholders across the uh, Northwest Territories. Uh, also been a lot of support and questions answered. And I really appreciate the work and the questions and the concerns that committee has brought forward and uh, working to where we are today and uh, look forward to seeing this down on the floor of the uh, Legislative Assembly. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Moses. Um, for the record, so everybody understands, this is a step that we're moving towards. The, this will be brought to the floor. There will be a comprehensive report that the committee had gone out and has done that will be on the floor as well, and there will be uh, as clause by clause on the floor as well, the committee the whole, and so more to stay tuned till next week <laughs> and hopefully by end of next week we will have bill 16 completed if with amendments if there's amendments or whatever so again thank you very much i appreciate the public for coming um i know there's a hockey game going on right now and well, hopefully Ottawa's winning but uh <laughs> oh am i cheering for ottawa yeah okay but anyway so thank you very much for coming i appreciate your time and i appreciate the committee and our research staff and our law clerk for all the work they've did to, to this date um, and the, the support they have provided. So thank you again, Mr. Moses, and everybody else. Have a good night. We, yes, we'll, we'll, committee will stay just after this for a bit. Thank you. Thank you.